Giants are found in the myths and legends of many different cultures. Their appearance rarely differs much from an ordinary human. For example, the Cyclops in the Odyssey, written by Homer, besides being a giant, was generally human-looking, except for that one big eye in the center of his forehead. The Bible mentions in passing a divine origin for ancient giants, and in Scandinavian legends, giants actually confront the gods. Quote, At that time, there were giants on the earth. Since the sons of God began to enter the daughters of men and began to give birth to them, they are strong, anciently glorious people. End quote. Why did people on different continents and in such disparate civilizations have such similar stories about giants? Is it possible that these are remnants of memories of certain ancient civilizations? A medieval Danish historian, wonderfully named Saxo Grammaticus, assumed that the giants really existed, else how to explain the giant-sized buildings and structures of antiquity. Many written sources of those years do speak of such things. For example, in the old English poem Seafarer, a tale is told of enormous stone walls supposedly built by giants. There is also mention of giant beings in a number of historical documents. Herodotus writes of the Spartans acquiring the bones of the warrior Orestes to help with a military campaign. The skeleton is noted to have had a height of seven cubits, that's eleven and a half feet or three and a half meters in modern terms. The ancient Greek scholar Pausanias described how a skeleton of a man of about 18 feet or five and a half meters tall was found on the bottom of a river. Josephus Flavius, a Roman historian, transcribed the testimonies of eyewitnesses who saw live giants themselves. These observers reported that the giants' faces were different from ordinary human faces and that the towering creatures possessed thundering voices. In the era of early Christianity, priests believed that Adam's height was 13 feet, about 4 meters, and that Eve was just a bit shorter at about 10 feet tall or 3 meters. Records of these writings are available in the archives of the Vatican. A number of 13-foot-tall skeletons, that's 4 meters for you metric aficionados, were excavated in the Caucasus Mountains during the 20th century. The age of these giant skeletons dates from somewhere between tens and even hundreds of thousands of years ago. The presence of such a large number of skeletal remains allowed scientists to assume that the giants moved here in search of salvation after some global catastrophe. Here they found their final shelter and resting place. In one very old book entitled History and Antiquity, now stored at the Oxford University Library, there is an account of the discovery in the Middle Ages of a giant skeleton in Cumberland. Quote, the giant is buried in the ground at a depth of four yards and is in full military garb. His sword and battle axe are resting next to him. The length of the skeleton is four and a half yards and the teeth of the big man are measured at six and a half inches long and two broad. End quote. Adding to the evidence verifying the existence of giants are numerous gigantic fossilized footprints. For example, an imprint of a human foot 80 centimeters or two and a half feet in length has been unearthed in Tanzania. Similar footprints of a slightly smaller size, about 50 centimeters or one and a half feet, were found in the Nevada desert left approximately 250 million years ago. A series of handprints was found next to traces of dinosaurs near a village in Turkmenistan. The height of the giant that left them is estimated at about 5 meters, almost 16 and a half feet, and lived 150 million years ago. A human tooth, five times larger than an ordinary man's tooth, was found in Hong Kong in 1935. A 60 centimeter or two foot high human skull with two rows of teeth was found in Alaska in 1950. And a 50 foot long petrified human skeleton, that's 15 meters folks, was found in Mongolia in 1999. The sheer plethora of evidence allows us to state unequivocally that giants did indeed once exist. But whether they were a single people who settled all over the earth or belong to different races, this is a question which scientists have yet to unambiguously answer. But if giants really existed, and not only in myth and legend, 
then it stands to reason that other traces of their lives should also exist. For example, architectural structures and other such objects. In the opinion of a number of scientists, the numerous megalithic objects that have been discovered all over the Earth serve as proof of the prior existence of giants. Even in our time, with modern technology, it is extremely difficult to build such monumental objects, and tens or even hundreds of thousands of years ago, without some kind of mechanical lifting mechanisms, it seems that it would have been virtually impossible. And yet, they exist. This is the famous Baalbek Terrace located in Lebanon near Beirut. Three huge stone slabs, each weighing about 800 tons, are embedded in its base. The plates are identical and fit together so seamlessly that one cannot even insert the blade of a knife between them. Researchers calculated that to install just one such stone block, 21 meters wide and 54 meters long, would require the simultaneous effort of at least 35,000 people. Who, how, and why did they do it? Handwritten Arabic treatises say that the structure was built as a temple of Jupiter and that the giant beings built it on the orders of King Nimrod just after the flood. The ancient city of Teotihuacan, the city of gods, is located 31 miles from Mexico City and is an entire complex of huge stone blocks. According to the most common historical version of events, the city was built by giants to turn people into gods. Its layout resembles a model of the solar system, from the central temple, which embodies the sun, at appropriate distances are the planet temples, even including Pluto, which modern astronomers only discovered in 1930. This means that the inhabitants of this site somehow already knew a great deal of astronomy, even at that ancient time. Regarding objects that giants might have built, scholars also include the Egyptian Sphinx, the English Stonehenge, the stone figures of Easter Island, and the Tibetan City of the Gods. Not only are these structures themselves amazing, but also their geometrical connection with each other. For example, a line drawn from the Tibetan City of Gods to the Egyptian Sphinx, if continued, leads directly to Easter Island. And another line from the City of Gods through the Mexican Pyramids also goes to Easter Island. These two lines delineate one-fourth of the Earth's surface, and a line drawn from the City of the Gods to Stonehenge divides this quarter exactly in half. And what about modern people who are giants? One view is that the life and then disappearance of these giants is related to some cosmic cataclysm. There is evidence that, hundreds of millions of years ago, a huge asteroid approached our planet, and the dimensions of this asteroid exceeded those of our present-day moon. It's postulated that it became a satellite of the Earth, and because of this, the gravity in our planet was significantly weakened. It was then that the giants appeared and developed a fairly advanced civilization. Hundreds of thousands or even millions of years later, this satellite descended from its orbit and disintegrated, its debris falling to the Earth. Survivors of the disaster, through mutation and adaptation, decreased in size, as the gravity on the planet had suddenly increased dramatically. In addition, the ozone layer of the atmosphere decreased sevenfold, increasing the negative impact of solar radiation. Now, a smaller body meant less total surface area and thus a lesser exposure to the sun's radiative effects. Some researchers have ascertained that before the catastrophe, the Earth's atmosphere contained one and a half times as much oxygen as now. Large animals thrive with more oxygen and this helps explain the fossil record of all the giant animals and plants characteristic of that time, which obviously would also be beneficial to giant humanoids. After the disaster, the size of the giants gradually decreased. According to some well-known anthropologists, such as Christopher Bohm and Franz Weidenreich, before the explosion and fall of the satellite asteroid, the Asuras, inhabitants of the legendary continent of Lemuria, reached a height of 50 meters or 160 feet. As a result of the catastrophe, the continent divided, and the once united race of giants were now isolated from each other. The successors of the Asuras were 18 meters tall, that's about 60 feet, 
and their successors 6 meters or about 20 feet tall. As a result of these new environmental conditions in the world, the giants in many areas died out. But in some areas they managed to survive, at least until the 16th century. Of course, such a theory runs counter to the teachings of Darwin. But it is this theory that most plausibly explains the existence of the giants. What do you think? Let's discuss this fascinating topic in the comments under the video. Thank you kindly for your attention and see you again soon, my dear subscribers and viewers.